Another another topic that may be discussed at clinics is recording. Right. Um, are you a whole take guy or do you actually, you know, do segments and recording in that way as well, depending on what the session is and what the producer asks? You know, it, it varies. The last record I did was an artist named Takamatsumoto, who's a Japanese uh, guitar virtuoso. He's also a member of the big pop band, The Bees. But this was his record. And, you know, that record was um, basically there, was, there were demos that were very, very specific. And so I would basically go in and for that record it was all, generally I find first or second takes are the best for me. I feel like they have enough um, character, they have enough, but, and, and usually it's, it's all there, but it's, um, I, I just find that there's a certain excitement to me, a freshness. And after you start recording it too much, or at least in the same day, yeah. I feel like you lose that. I lose Trying that. more than actually playing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I think you're just like, you know, again, it goes to that, like, those first few takes are more, not reckless at all, but, but, but just organic, natural. You know, the real you is coming out. And then you start overthinking it. I, I prefer, and on this record we did, I would do two takes max. And then if there was something that... We would just go, we wanted, maybe there's a couple alternate fills ideas. We would just just do four or five passes of the fill section or a punch transition it. and punch it in if they wanted. But otherwise, I tend to, you know, and that record was, it was interesting and not, I wouldn't say difficult, but it, it, it was difficult. It was very complex music. It's a record called uh, The Voyage that you can get, Tak Matsumoto. And uh, the bass players were all fantastic bass players. Um, and... Um, they wanted, you know, a lot of times that was tricky because they'd want to get first takes or they want to get the takes with both of us. And that's fun, but sometimes, you know, the first or second take, maybe I felt really good with. And so there's there's a certain push and pull with the bass player that you have to deal with, and especially when you're recording yeah. like that. But it varies, I think it varies depending on what session, yeah. what, what the music is. Do you think, because a lot of players say that, uh, the, the modern technology, the copy-paste thing, um, is taking away from the feel of the music and you know depriving the music of something generic. Do you agree with that? I do, I do, I absolutely. And I know that even you know I've been spending some time in Nashville too, which is really happening, and talking to those guys down there, where more than anywhere that art form is of four or five guys going into a room and making a record together. Still. That's very still, you know, and even that is starting to 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 enter into that world. And I know a lot of. A lot of guys are hearing a difference, you know, down there especially. I think the rest of the world, the way it's been done, is it's more common that, you know, uh, in L.A. or New York or, you know, um, I feel like you're, you're, there's a lot more punching. And, and uh, I think it's starting to happen now in Nashville too. But um, I've done records where I've played on the record. I would maybe even get a copy of or record while I'm listening back just to hear what I did later. Um and then when the record comes out, it doesn't sound anything like that. Because some guys, because they can, they'll start cleaning it up, cleaning it up, cleaning it up. And, and um, I'll talk about this tomorrow. But the feel, you know, uh, to me, you know, they're, you're, you're literally stripping a drummer of their identity and the feel. And maybe I think these guys, because they think, and I'm talking about producers or even in some cases the band, you know, the, maybe the singer or whoever's the songwriter who's involved, they think when they're kind of um, cleaning these parts up, they're literally taking out the, the, the feel. And when I'm playing this track as a drummer, I'm not just trying to play the right part. I'm not just trying to play a smart part. I'm also trying to play something that I feel that will create, will, will make it feel good. You know, and, and I talk about that tomorrow in the clinic too which is something that most drummers don't really talk about. They don't talk about it either A, because they're not aware of it, or B, because the best drummers who have the great feel have no idea how to verbalize it. And I think young drummers need to learn about that. And to me, it ties in directly with what you're asking, because it's all about the feel. And so to me, I use the hi-hat a lot, and I'll talk about this tomorrow in detail, about how I use the hi-hat to create a push or a pull, because if you're playing to a click, which most music is, you can still make it feel like it's pushing and pulling, which makes it exciting to me. Um, my favorite drummers, uh, you know, John Bonham is just a quick example, made songs feel like they were pushing or pulling by utilizing the hi-hat of the bass drum and the relationship between those instruments 
in a song. That's feel. And when you start cleaning things up, you're literally losing the point. Literally. You're missing the entire point of what I was doing, which to me I thought would have complemented the song more. And um, You might just as well just draw the MIDI map. and In some cases, yeah. yeah. It's just the technology has gotten in the way. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, and I was actually just talking to um, to Kaz earlier about you know the Roland stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd like to get more involved with that. And you know I just when I was in high school I had all Simmons drums. You know I was at the front end of that. Yeah. You know it was just happening. And I'm all my pop bands. You know tr you know I had Simmons and as well as like Roto Toms or regular drums mixed in because I thought it was it was important at the time. It was you know um, that said I guess. You know, other than doing like for like uh, when I did um, Rock of Ages, you know, that musical, I kind of was at the beginning of that. I, I helped arrange all that music. I was playing, I brought in an old, because it was a lot of 80s music, I brought in an old SDS 5 brain and, tr and had some Simmons going for, for some of it. But other than that, I have not, and I want to get hip to it because um, I think more and more it's also important. Not only that, but, but learning Ableton and learning that because. Pop music is king right now, you know, rock music, just in the time that I've been playing it, let's face it, there's been a lot of changes in music. And um, Europe, I think rock is still very strong, but in America, for sure, and in a lot of other parts of the world, pop is kind of taken over. And that's okay, there's transitions. I'm not, hey man, I'm fine with it. I, and uh, I got to, to do, a, I've been able to do a lot of rock stuff, you know, but to me, diversifying and adapting, like what we've talked about. I'm looking around going, yeah, I need to get back into the electronic thing because it's important. And being able to run Ableton if you need to because that's being called for more and more in, in modern music. So, uh, You're starting this clinic tour. Uh, what's next? What, what are your plans for the immediate future? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I just... Touring-wise. Uh, Touring-wise, you know, I... Um, I'm actually right now I'm uh, wide open, you know, for the first time in a while, and it actually feels good. I was uh, touring with a band called Smash Mouth for a while, and then chose to go do this Japanese run, and uh, have actually already been hired back for that. So that's mm -hmm. that's the next um, that's next on the books is as another tour with Tuck, you know, and Japan, which I love. I've always I just love the culture and I love the style and. Uh, it's just everything is so well done there, the production and the music. So um, that, as of right now, is the next, you know, the next mm -hmm. gig. As okay. Of right now. So best of luck Wonderful. with your plans. Good luck tomorrow, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. And hope to see you sometime in the future. Wonderful. Cheers. <laughs>